Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto could be unmasked at Florida trial. So a lot of people are talking about this, specifically the cryptocurrency community. Um, so uh, 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 the family of a deceased man is suing his former business partner over control of their partnership's assets. In this case, the asset in question uh, are a cache of about 1 million Bitcoins, equivalent to about 64 to $70 billion today, belonging to Bitcoin's creator and pseudonym, Satoshi Nakamoto, the family of the dead man, says he and his business partner together were Nakamoto, and thus the family is entitled to half the fortune. This is what a Florida jury will try to tackle. The family of David Kleiman is suing his former business partner, 52-year-old, 51-year-old Australian programmer living in London named Craig Wright. Wright has been arguing since 2016 that he created Bitcoin, claim dismissed by most in Bitcoin community. Kleiman's family argues that the two worked on and mined Bitcoin together, entitled Kleiman's family to a half a million Bitcoins. By the way, very interesting angle to get Satoshi to yeah, come sure. out. Right. I actually like the angle to force the guy to come yeah. out. You know, this story is really fascinating. And, you know, there's so much money involved. I'm surprised somebody hasn't been killed yet, right? Because this goes back to 2008. Interesting. Somebody is holding on to that private key, right? Someone has it. You think maybe, they, maybe they're not coming out for that reason? You think that's why the person doesn't want others to know? I, I think this thing could be a movie. It could be a deadline episode or a dateline episode or something. Now, I do know the one person on the planet that could find the true identity Here we go. of Sakamoto. Nakamoto, Sakamoto. Yeah, that's a, Bernie, that's a drink, but it's okay. Bernie but. Sanders, because he'll want that tax money, right? So he can go find that person, Ooh. go get the tax money out. He can shame him on Twitter. Detective um, AOC on the case, right? I, I believe that he could actually find it. But this really is a fascinating story. Who leaves that much money out there unless they're very, very patient, right? And and it, this whole thing with a Florida, only in Florida, right? Could you find this? It's one of those only in Florida. Um, it seems like a stretch. But the deep, this this is a fast. If they had court TV, I'd be watching this trial on TV right now. I really would. So I think nothing's gonna happen. I don't think. I mean, you interviewed Craig Wright. Do you think he's Satoshi Nakamoto? I don't know. I I, I lean towards no, but I don't know. But uh, my, I I there's a lot of people in the community. There's some that say Craig Wright. There's a lot that say Adam Back. There's a lot. You know, there's different names that come up on who could be Satoshi Nakamoto. I know who Robert in the office thinks it is. Who's CIA. That? He thinks it's the CIA. He thinks it's the government that's behind it. The government yeah. designed this, is yes. what he's thinking. Uh, Brilliant. And the other thing I think as well with this is Robert, a, b- a big awesome. thing. A big thing. Yeah, we went to the moon in 1920, gentlemen. So <laughs> it's uh, it's it's Robert. And but, that's, uh, a, that's a bright guy to say something like no, that. Yeah, it's not like Robert's a, not a bright guy. No, no, no. Not yeah. at all. Not at all. Uh, the only the big thing here for me is that the, neither one of them have found have the keys to the to the to the wallet. Mm-hmm. So without that, you're screwed. The, the private key. Yes, mm-hmm. and without that, you can't even get a hold exactly. of it. Exactly. So so why would if you're if 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 Craig Wright is him, and he claims to be him, why yeah. wouldn't he just reveal it? It's like one thing you have to do to prove it. And he well, BBC did a story with him. I think it was BBC did a story with him, getting him ready to reveal the key, and he was supposed and he couldn't do it. I don't yeah. know if you've seen the video. I, I haven't seen that video. I, it's, if you've not seen it, it's very interesting. Like it's the I'm gonna show the world that I'm the yeah. guy, and it's like, oh, it's not working. I no. forgot. I you know, so it's kind of <laughs> a little bit awkward exactly, on what. Exactly. If you listen to this, folks, who do you think, especially those of you guys that follow crypto, who do you think Satoshi Nakamoto is? Go ahead, Tom. You know, I think things hide in plain sight. And no one has come out to counter these guys. And so as odd as it sounds and the missing key, sometimes the simplest explanation is like when big complicated crimes, you have all the talking heads talking about crimes for weeks and weeks and weeks, like the missing girl and then the guy found in the swamp. <laughs> right. It ends up being very simple. It's always that guy, you know, no, the fiance, it, the but boyfriend. It, it, it's a simpler story than we all weave it into being when we're overthinking it. I... I tend to lean that it's these guys. These guys were in a partnership and they created it because it's usually the simple answer. So at the you end do of think crimes. this is the. Oh, oh. I'm leaning this way. I'm leaning this way saying, you know what? This is very plausible that these two guys created it. These two guys created the, the, the you know, the, the, the secret pirate in the back, you know, flying the flag against fiat currency. And, you know. OK, question his. for you. What's <clears throat> what's their rationale for not cashing in on any of it? Tom, he's asking you. Yeah. It's a question. Yeah, I got, it. <laughs> for you, Tom. I, I got it. It's, I, you know, I can't, that's, that's the part in this case I can't get my head yeah. around. It's like, why, why wouldn't one of them take the money and run? 
I mean, in this case, though, if they were partners and Craig Wright proved to have it, then he'd have to pay. Look, there, there, there's very interesting things with law. You sent me a story yesterday about Vanessa Bryant, but what happened where she was... Uh, you, maybe you tell the story what happened there. Well, she's suing L.A. County Sheriff's Department yep. because they took photos of the of the crash scene when Kobe died. Yep. They looked at him. They circulated him. She's suing them, saying that it has caused her some serious traumatic damage, right? So now the county wants access to her records of any psychological exams or therapy sessions so they can see if it actually did cause that or if she's just saying that. So That's what I'm saying. So, so that's the part about law, that if you file a lawsuit, the person can come and ask specific questions to validate your point that it mm-hmm. affected you. Right. And in this case, when this guy's coming out saying Satoshi is my 50-50% partner, if he doesn't come out, I mean, law law could almost force this guy to come out. Mm-hmm. So he's either going to be sitting there saying, look, uh, you know, I don't want to come out and give up half of $74 billion, or he's going to come out and say, it's me. And then how, how is this going to change? Adam Back said in an interview about uh, why it's not a good idea for Satoshi to come out and why it's better for the world not to know. Yeah. The way he explained it was, it's better to not see the one person as an expert. Because every time something happens with that currency, they're going to go to, so what do you think since you started this? What do you think since you started this? I don't think that's a good idea. I think we need to leave it alone as just a currency without a founder to that currency. That's their view on Bitcoin. I think a big thing on that, too, is that it's better to not have somebody who's behind it because then it's truly decentralized. Like, if it's... If it's a certain person, then That's you, don't his know, argument. you don't know how much he owns and if that could then totally tank the market or not. So I think a big thing there is just a matter of having it decentralized to where we don't know. And, and that's part of the mystery, of, of which is yeah. a good thing because that gives it a little bit of trust. It's more like uh, almost spiritual or religious where it's like, I believe in it. I don't know who, what, why, but that's kind of what we're, we're thinking. I, I was interviewed by Natalie Brunel yesterday, who's a, a, a Bitcoin expert and a finance expert, kind of like a Pompliano type of yep. person. Not crypto. She made it very specific. She's Bitcoin uh, and she's a, 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 what do you call it, a, a finance expert. Mm-hmm. And uh, she had a story that went live on Twitter uh, that went viral on Twitter, like a million views or two million views on Fox Business. She was talking about how the economy right now is favoring Bitcoin. You saw what Shamat said just a couple of days ago, the fact that People were laughing at me when Bitcoin was $200, and I told them this thing's going to go to the roof, and you guys didn't buy into it, and now it's sixty some thousand dollars He said, it's going to go to 100000 It's going to go to one fifty. It's going to go to $200,000. Just a matter of time before that happens. It's going to happen in a year, two years, three years. I don't know. Yep. But the argument of where they are is making more and more and more sense. On the Ethereum side, what's starting to make more sense is the fact that all NFTs are being purchased through Ethereum, Ethereum which means... Those who were not for Ethereum, if NFT takes off, that means Ethereum takes sure. off. So the biggest question right now for an investor, if I were to ask a question, and I, you know, both sides of the argument, they give me a different argument. Here's, here's the argument. What's Ethereum today? What is it worth today? Do, do you know what the numbers are now on Ethereum? I was just no. popping that up. I lifted my phone yeah, up. Yeah, what, what is Ethereum right now? I go know over to Coinbase and see the, uh, the stock. Uh, uh, it's at 4318 dollars wow. Okay, so Ethereum is at 4318 Okay. And Bitcoin is at 60732 right? Here's the question you got to ask yourself. What is more likely of happening? Is it more likely for Ethereum to go from 4300 to 12000 Or is it more likely for Bitcoin to go from 60000 to 200000 What's more likely? Can I, I say they're equally likely. Exactly right. Okay, you're saying equally. Yeah. So that's what the Bitcoin folks will say, that it's equally likely. Right. likely. But the NFT folks will tell you, Ethereum's going to catch mm-hmm. up to Bitcoin. That's yeah. the debate right yeah. now between the two. Yeah, this is the law of small stocks, right? You come into a stock at five, you think you go to 15, now you just tripled your money. Whereas you go into, you know, Amazon or Apple at 250, it's got to get to 600. So it's, you know, it's the law of small yeah. stocks here. It's a really good point there because you've got, you know, Rarible and OpenSea really controlling like 80% of the NFT market or something like that. I mean, they are the giants in the room and it's all Ethereum. And you know, with um, and the, what's the leading mask? The uh, the leading wallet mask. Okay, so check this out. We got 324 Meta likes mask. right now, and we got 95 dislikes. Folks, if you're more leaning towards Bitcoin tripling before Ethereum, put thumbs up. If you're more for Ethereum tripling, 
before Bitcoin, put thumbs down. I'm curious yeah. because I, the, it is becoming like a religion. It's so interesting sure. watching the Bitcoin and the Ethereum community. Can I say something about yeah. this story? I think it is utterly fascinating that we don't know the creator of Bitcoin. Because if you are involved in that world where you are creating a currency, you're in the finance world. You're interested in making money. All right. You're driven by that. And this is just sitting here. No one knows. Either the person's dead, right? Or what could possibly be the motivation for us not knowing who this is? And what happens when this is 740 billion or a 200 billion or something like that? It's 74 billion right now. If we were talking about this story at the beginning of the year, it would have been way less than that. But that's a lot of money sitting on the table. That's not going to be the first lawsuit. And I just think this is a fascinating mystery. So what you the think it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time before it comes out. I think maybe the maybe not so much the identity of a single person, but maybe more of how this was created, and, and then we'll learn that it isn't one person, possibly. By the way, it's it's more people voting for Bitcoin tripling than Ethereum. Yeah. Two to one is what the numbers are looking like right now. So there's a lot of Bitcoin people than uh, Ethereum people, maybe at least at the, on this podcast. Uh, uh, Real Diaz, thank you for the 20 bucks. Somebody uh, that just gave $50. Uh, said the following, which is quite interesting. He I'm said, convinced the government created Bitcoin, yep. perfect tool for moving off the books cash, also guaranteed to have built in cheap, cheap code. Totally cheap disagree code. with yeah, that. JP totally well. disagree. Tell me why. Be- because it's too hard for a government employee to keep a secret. I could see a, a no. It's a mis- not. A, it's not a government employee though. This is like a a a. a yeah, but a government employee off- would know of the secret. No, would know I don't, of I don't it think so. somehow. If you go, if you go from the defense budget, where I mean, they can't even keep track of their money. They don't know what goes where and who has what and who has access to what and who knows about what. So, if anything in the government, it's some, some sort of military budget. That's been off the books, blacklisted. That where it's been. Then, spent. then there's a. I mean, look, if they're looking to change the military, some former military member that was involved with this would talk. I think when you create something that potentially becomes this big, enough people know about it where someone is going to say something. If it's a government entity. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.